Peter Jean Fay, can you summarize this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry for us? Yes. It's about a new tool for making organic molecules. And it's, if I would summarize it in an easy way, what it really means, think about playing chess. And then you introduce a new player on the chessboard that has new rules. Well, that means that you can will think about the game in a different way and you can execute the game in a different way. And that is the power of new methodology when it comes to organic chemistry. Hello everyone. Welcome to the Birla Industrial and Technological Museum's online lecture series celebrating the Science Nobles 2021. You've just heard Peter Songfai, member of the Nobel Committee, speak about the award-winning work immediately following the announcement of the 2021 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Now, building molecules is a difficult art. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry was awarded this year for the development of a precise new tool for molecular construction, asymmetric organocatalysis. This has had a great impact on pharmaceutical research and has made chemistry greener. The Nobel research awarded this year basically focuses on two entities, molecules and catalysts. Today, we'll try to take them up at the fundamental level, along with a discussion on the attitude essential for quality research. We look forward to your comments and the YouTube chat panel will be open to receive your questions. We'll try to take them up at the end of the session. Now, to delve into a totally new way of thinking for how to put together chemical molecules, we have with us a very special guest today. I would request Director BITM, Mr. V.S. Ramachandran, to introduce us to him and initiate this discussion on controlled chirality. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Aditya. Uh, good afternoon, and a warm welcome to BITM online lecture series, the Science Nobel 2021. Today is the third day, highlighting the importance of this year Nobel Prize when you work in chemistry we are honored to have with us today Dr. Nitin Chattopadhyaya, Professor, Department of Chemistry and the former Dean, Faculty of Science from Yadavpur University. Welcome, you, sir. Highly decorated himself, Professor Chattopadhyaya is a recipient of Bronze Medal of Chemical Research Society of India, the Professor S.C. Ameta Award for the Indian Chemical Society, uh, Professor S.R. Mohanty Award from the Orissa Chemical Society and this year Tiksharatna Awardee from Government of West Bengal. He is a fellow of the Indian Academic of Sciences, a great thing to be a fellow. Yeah, National Academy of Sciences, India and West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology. Serving on the editorial boards of a number of international journals, he specializes in photochemistry biophysical chemistry, surface chemistry, fluorescence sensing, and polymer photophysics. A veteran at many of the outreach events of BATM, we welcome you, sir. You are always with the BATM, I know very well. I welcome you, sir, to deliver the talk, Molecules or Miracles. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ramachandran and Aditi. I consider uh, myself as a family member of this BITM family. So uh, let us, without wasting time, let's go to the presentation mode. Uh, again, enter screen. Share. Is it visible, Aditi? Yes, sir, it is. And audi I am audible too. Yes, yes. So, uh, I'm happy to be here, being a part of this series of three lectures addressed to the Nobel Prize 2021. The first one was on physiology and medicine. Second one, these two are already over. Second one was on physics, and obviously the last one is the chemistry. So, <clears throat> Let me first disclose that uh, I'm not here to describe the Nobel work. I'm not capable of doing that too. Rather, what I would address or how I would try to do is, I try to make the surroundings 
how one can go ahead for quality research may not be at the uh, noble level of course that is the highest level of research but still how can quality research be achieved in our uh, own way okay this is me please don't hesitate at any later time to contact me for any reason at this uh, email and this is my mobile number okay so how do i organize this entire talk of maybe 50 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever it may be as i already told i will not go into the detail of the nobel work actually but i will just move around it so the nobel prize in chemistry 2021 of course i will give a little bit in information on it then as uh, Auditi already told that this year's Nobel is basically on catalyst. That means we are addressing to two different things. So one is molecule. So I will discuss a little bit on molecule and their characterization. And obviously catalyst and mechanism of action addressing towards the students who are attending this uh, meeting. Then the more important thing is research attitude. What are the essential criteria for anyone to be a quality researcher? I may not say good researcher, but quality researcher at least. And if time permits, I will uh, just show you a glimpse of research from our own uh, laboratory. Only the essence of those things. So this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry has been awarded to Dr. Benjamin List of Max Planck Institute for Coal Research, Mulheim, Germany. And 50% share goes to David Macmillan of Princeton University, USA. So they have the equal uh, contributions on this year's Nobel Prize. Now, what is the basic topic of them? Interestingly, uh, both List and Macmillan, they independently published two works, two independent works in the same year, 2000, that means 2000, in JETS, Journal of American Chemical Society, one of the most prestigious journals in chemistry. And their works were quite in the same area. And so they were chosen together for this year's award. And that th uh, phrase or topic that they developed, the Nobel Committee developed, goes like this. Enamine and Eminium ion mediated organocatalysis. This is important. Organocatalysis. Okay. So, these are some photographs. This is some official declaration. So, this will be there in YouTube and uh, who are interested, they, they can just uh, go to read them if they are interested. Now, so the topic for this year's Nobel is enamine and eminium are mediated organocatalysis. This immediately gives us two important items because this is catalysis. So catalysis is connected to two terms. One is molecule and the other one is catalyst itself or catalysis, the process, the method. What is a molecule? That is you see, as I consider in any subject, in any topic, the first question should be, what is that? So what is a molecule? Everybody knows. A molecule is an electrically neutral group of atoms joined together by chemical bonds. Whatever may be the types of chemical bonds, electrovalent, covalent, covalent, valent, it doesn't matter, chemical bonds. And examples, plenty, plenty, oxygen, methane, caffeine, DNA, protein, etc., etc., innumerous number of molecules of varieties of types. But in relation to this year's Nobel Prize, this category of molecules, known as asymmetric molecules, are specially important. What is an asymmetric molecule? Let us consider with a very simple molecule. A carbon molecule. So, you know, we all know that carbon is tetravalent. So, this is connected to four different atoms or groups. A, one, two, three, and four. So, 
maybe we can place this as this molecule okay and if we put a mirror we can get the mirror image of it now interestingly asymmetric molecules for asymmetric molecules these two mirror the original one and the mirror image they are not superimposable this is very important and that leads to a different types of molecules as they will be called and they are called asymmetric molecules not symmetric asymmetric molecules now a molecule to be asymmetric the four terms should be different four attachments should be different okay now how do we represent okay there are standard things in books you will get every okay. and the miracles of these molecules come from their importance in medicine these molecules are termed in terms of some latin word sometimes they are called r r some molecule like maybe r cetrigine or s cetrigine r comes from latin word rectus right s sinister meaning left and another pair of words dextro also the source is latin dextro means right word rotating and levo means left word rotating so cetrigin you, you all know or most of you know that cetrigin is a very common medicine that we often use to treat against allergy okay so the speciality of these asymmetric molecules towards their action on or as a medicine is very important sometimes whole the total collection of r and s or sometimes this is called b or l they work simultaneously to combat against the disease to the same extent but there are plenty of examples where one form one configuration may be a good medicine while the other configuration acting as a poison for the human body or maybe any living being so in that sense this is very very important to segregate them to isolate and to collect only the one only the configuration maybe r or s that is suitable for our treatment or for our requirement okay the mixture as it is called racemic mixture will not do right recently cetrigine the full name is cetrigine actually anyway cetrigine is being replaced by l form of cetrigine to treat against allergy okay how are these different configurations formed say for example this is the starting material or originating material reacting material and some other group is joining to this carbon because this carbon is having this double bond here c double bond so cyanide may come from top and this goes there and h is joined so we get some form of this oh and cl okay tetra valence is maintained for the carbon so this cn can either come join this unit from top giving one configuration or it may also come and join this group from the bottom giving another configuration one being r the other being s i don't know which one is which okay so this is the important thing now why this asymmetric synthesis and asymmetric molecule they get special attention or special coverage or special weightage for this year's nobel because this year the nobel laureates they have discovered a new type of catalyst i'll come to it later on they preferably prepare a only one form of this configuration two configurations 
almost quantitatively maybe 95 percent enantiomeric ex excess or 97 percent something like that so this is the speciality and let me repeat again the two forms one may be friendly to us the other may be poisonous and it happens like that okay so coming back again to the works of benjamin list and david macmillan the title i'm repeating again enamine and immunium ion mediated amine so this is n or in and this is amine so enamine and this was the work of benjamin list and immunium ion based reaction was shown by macmillan so what is immunium ion? actually this is the imine okay this is amine and this is imine so imine and you add r4 plus so it becomes immunium ion so these two they constitute this year's nobel okay now to give an example of this thing particularly enamine proline is a protein you know proline can both activate carbonyls in aldol condensation reaction so this proline can activate carbonyls reducing the activation energy i'll come to it later on and can control the reaction geometry that means whether it will be it will result or it will give rise to r product or s product right now quite some time back richard feynman a physicist nobel laureate of course he made a very fantastic very nice statement and what did he say everything that living things do can be understood in terms of the jiggling and wiggling of atoms so this is the basic thing so whatever we do or anything do, does is basically the movements of atoms and in some cases molecules okay so we have different types of molecules and also we have some aggregated units known as molecular aggregates or sometimes they are called self assembly assembly self assemble assembly sorry so the examples are like micelle what is a micelle if you take a surfactant like molecule having hydrophobic head hydrophilic loving lo having love towards water or protic medium or polar medium hydrophil hydro means water hydrophilic head group and hydrophobic tail group some aliphatic chain so if you just add on go on adding this molecule in aqueous solution after a certain concentration known as critical micellar concentration what happens initially they were in random motion in random arrangement but after a certain concentration as i called cmc critical micellar concentration to reduce the energy or to stabilize what do they they self aggregate they self associate they aggregate in the form in the shape that these hydrophilic head groups they make the boundary so it makes something like a football spherical or sometimes cylindrical also so let us consider spherical so the hydrophilic parts or ends will constitute the surface and the hydrophobic parts they will stay happily inside because there is much less of water inside now what is the use of it this is this can provide different environments like this is polar and this is non polar or apolar so what happens most of our drugs or medicines they are hydrophobic in nature they come from our organic molecules most of them so what happens they are not very soluble in water so we cannot take sufficient or required dose of medicine if we want to or if we try to take it naked so what do we do we put it inside my cell because this is hydrophobic so the organic molecules they very happily go into this and 
So this becomes a carrier. So my cell becomes a carrier. Okay. So this is the my cell. And it, similarly, we have reverse my cell also. In this case, in case of reverse my cell, the bulk medium is oily medium. And you see, these head groups, the hydrophilic head groups, they are now concentrated inside. And these hydrophobic tails are outside because outside is oil. They are loving. Now, how does this unit get stabilized? Stability? You put a very little amount of, very small amount of water. So, they are stabilized. You see, these red ones are water. So, this is called reverse micelles. Okay? This is just the reverse form of this micelle. Because here, outside medium is water. Here, outside medium is uh, oil like thing. Then also we have cyclorexin. Cyclorexin look like these truncated buckets. Okay. Glucopyranose units are there. And then six of them or seven of them or eight of them, they just assemble. Self-arranged. Self-aggregated. They are self-aggregated to form this thing. What is the speciality of this cyclorexin? Based on six, seven or eight uh, molecular aggregates called or known as alpha cyclorexin, beta cyclorexin, and gamma cyclorexin, they form something like this truncated bucket. And interestingly, these outside rim regions are hydrophilic because there are so many OH groups, but this inner side, inner cavity is they behave like hydrophobic environment. So this is another carrier of drugs. Okay, so you can you know, take the drug or encapsulate the encapsulate the drug inside it, and this whole entity will go to a, to the target where the drug should reach. Similarly, we have the molecular aggregates called lipids. Here also you see this is the polar head group. This is non-polar. This hydrophobic tail. And then this is in the reverse way. So here head group, tail part, tail part, head group. So basically a double layer. So sometimes it is called lipid bilayer. And this is the basic structure of our cell membranes. Okay. So this is this forms basically the cell membranes. Okay. Then also we have some molecular aggregates that maybe two molecules just stay. Uh, in coupled mode and they behave as a mole, as a unit as a singular unit okay not really molecular shape or molecular form but they work as a unit single unit okay now by now we know what are molecules now when a molecule is synthesized in the laboratory the next step is characterization of it so how do we characterize? It is the spectroscopy that helps us. Interestingly, spectroscopy is a fingerprint technique. So like my fingerprint cannot match with anyone, anyone's fingerprint in the world. So it is absolutely the same thing. So to cut the story short, there are different types of spectroscopy that we use, like using radio frequency in NMR, ESR, then microwave when we get this bond length for small molecules, of course, for big molecules, it's very difficult and it becomes useless in that sense. Then IR or infrared to characterize what are the functional groups are there, or if there is single bond, carbon carbon single bond, carbon carbon double bond, or triple bond, something like that. And then UV visible spectroscopy, which is commonly called as photochemistry. And you see, you know, this is the basis of existence of living creatures on the universe. Because photosynthesis uses this UV visible spectroscopy or photochemistry. And without this photosynthesis, nobody, nothing can exist as living being. And so far as the characterization and structures of the molecule is concerned, X-ray is very important and it gives the crystal structure uh, very clear. Okay, so these are the things, basic things that we use. There are some other modern techniques known as 
हाई रिजोल्यूशन मास स्पेक्ट्रो स्पेक्ट्रोमेट्री क्रायोजेनिक इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी ट्रांसमिशन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी इन शॉर्ट दिस इज कॉल्ड टेम सिमिलरली सेम एंड ए टेम करस्पॉन्डिंग टू स्कैनिंग इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी एटॉमिक फोर्स माइक्रोस्कोपी एंड इंटरेस्टिंगली सिंगल मॉलिक्यूल स्पेक्ट्रोस्कोपी सो बेसिकली नाउ इट इज पीपल कैन लोकेट द सिंगल मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ कोर्स दे कैनॉट सी द मॉलिक्यूल दे कैनॉट आइडेंटिफाई व्हाट आर द एटॉम्स दे आर दैट्स नॉट yet possible but from optical parameters these things can the single entities can be isolated and located they can be studied their properties can be studied and <clears throat> this is very important and wedgig and hell they got the nobel prize in 2014 for their discovery of single molecule spectroscopy in the year 1989 okay now after getting some information qualitative information and primary preliminary information on catalyst, on molecules what is catalyst what is catalyst catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of a reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change so you add at the beginning catalyst and at the end of the reaction you get back the catalyst but in between of course it goes into the reaction but ultimately or eventually at the end of the reaction it comes out again so that is the catalyst interestingly before 2000 or till 2000 we had the idea that catalysts are of two categories one is metal or metal related metal associated the other one is obviously biocatalysis or enzymes but the important papers of list and independently of macmillan in 2000 they conceptualized the area of organocatalysis so they discovered and they put forward the proposal proposition that not only the metals or metal related things and enzymes they are catalysts Sim simple organic molecules can also be Act, uh, can also act as important catalyst and they stimulated its development and now you see organocatalysis constitute the third pillar of catalysis the first one is this second one is this and third is the organocatalysis okay now asymmetric organocatalysis has its special relevance for the formation of a precise maybe l or dextro or levo uh, entity or maybe r or s entity one particular not just 50 50 so as in that sense asymmetric organocatalysis provides a precise new tool of course new tool a precise tool for construction of asymmetric molecules this is very very important because quite often in many of the times we need only one form of asymmetric molecule not the other one because if we get the other one this is this becomes useless okay so in a sense this asymmetric organ uh, catalysis it complements biocatalysis okay now some basic information about catalysis and catalyst as i promised i will not go into the very detail the concept was first introduced by swedish chemist berzelius way back in, in 1830 Now, interestingly, catalysis contributes to more than thirty-five percent of world's GDP. You see, so heavy importance in world's economy. In the year two thousand one, after or in his Nobel lectures, Ryuji Noyori he told, "Advances in chemical synthesis and catalysis implies the sustainable technological development of a country." so catalyst is so very important for any country of course as i said already catalysts in biological systems they are more known as enzymes now what is the mechanism of catalyst this is known catalyst lowers the activation energy of a reaction everybody knows that. and in all the literatures you will get a picture like this okay this is potential energy this is reaction coordinate meaning the progress of the reaction as we go right as we go to the right side this is the product final product and this is the reaction but the 
important message that I want to percolate to the youngsters is that these pictures are incorrect pictures. They are incorrect diagrams because this picture is really some sort of abbreviation. You know, this is basically a combination of most potential energy curves of the reactants as well as the product. So now we know that most potential energy curve is like coming down and then going like this. So this is the most potential energy curve. Okay, let me repeat. So starting from here, maybe it goes down and then comes over here. So this is the most potential energy curve for the reactants. And you just couple it to the most potential energy of the most potential energy curve of the product. And then you combine. So basically you get this entire diagram. But obviously this cannot be flat one, this cannot be flat one because this is the well. So although almost all the books, all the literature, they contain this thing, but please remember and accept that these figures are incorrect. So I would request all the youngsters to follow that this part should be some sort of, should show some sort of curvature like this. Okay? Here also. Now, <clears throat> okay, we know that uh, we, if we use catalyst, then this activation energy from here, it comes down. Then what is the mechanism of action of inhibitor? Inhibitor in some older books, they were termed as negative catalyst, but this is conceptually, this term is erotic, erroneous, okay? A catalyst means some something which can activate. So negative catalyst doesn't give any meaning in that sense. Inhibitor. So this restricts. In many, in some books, loosely it is written that it increases the activation energy. Here it was saying that it lowers the activation energy and for inhibitors, the mechanism in some book cases, they say that it increases the activation energy. But that is also again wrong. Because in case, if we accept that, okay, presence of inhibitor raises this energy, activation energy, fine. Then the reactants have the option either to follow the original path or to follow the higher activation energy path. So why should it opt for this higher one? It will simply throw it out. Like you, you are taking A and B to react in a beaker. You put some glass pieces, some small pieces of glass. Nothing will happen. The reaction will continue its own uh, uh, pathway. Okay? So, here also, the inhibitor should be ignored. So, that cannot act as inhibitor. Because inhibitor means it, it slows down the reaction rate. So, what is the mechanism? So, that is not the proper mechanism. The proper mechanism is very simple. Separating A and B, they are reacting, and you add C. Inhibitors are C that react to it or that bind somehow loosely with A. So a part of A is being captured by the inhibitors, right? So that part of A or that portion of A, they are unable to undergo reaction. So when basically the concentration of A is reduced. If the concentration is reduced, then reaction rate is product of rate constant into concentration of the reactants. So when the reaction rate, uh, when the uh, reactant concentration goes down, obviously the reaction rate will come down. So that is the actual explanation. Okay, fine. Now this is important. What is the research attitude? Let me uh, put forward some well-known and well-respected, well-accepted statements, quotes. This was given by Professor A.P. Abdul Kalam. Dream. For any, to achieve anything great, one has to dream. What is dream? Dream is not that you see in sleep. Dream is something that does not let you sleep. That is dream. Okay? Then, Another important thing is attitude. 
attitude is everything in a person's life. How he explains it. All birds find shelter during a rain. But eagle avoids rain, not by hiding it, him or itself uh, under some shade. What does it do? But eagle avoids rain by flying above the clouds. And if you are, when you are above the clouds, no rain. So you see, problems are common to all. But attitude makes the difference. So we have to build proper attitude in us. Another example, another quote of Thomas of Edison. I haven't failed. I haven't failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that don't work. So this is called positive attitude. Okay. Then the known face, Ratan Tata, he says in one occasion, none can destroy iron, but its own rust can. Similarly, none can destroy a person, but his own mindset can. Mindset is simply the other word of attitude. So attitude is everything. Okay. Now, to do quality research, you have to have some education. You have to have some knowledge, have some idea. What is the objective of education? Getting some high marks and good certificates and mark sheets? No, dears. That is not the objective of education. What is the objective of education? If I ask the question, the answer comes like to enhance the capability of logical thinking on any aspect, on any subject, on any topic. So the objective of education should be to enhance the capability of logical thinking. And you know, this logical thinking is the basis of quality. So unless we have the power of logical thinking, we cannot be good researchers. You see, after getting the Nobel Prize, Benjamin List told in a press conference, when I first did the experiment, I didn't know what would happen. And I thought, maybe it's a stupid idea. Or somebody has already tried it. But when I saw it work, I did feel that this could be something new. So this should be the attitude. Even if you don't find many optimistic or some very optimistic on something, you have to try. And something big may come out of it. Important aspects of research attitude. Think out of box. And design your scientific problem in your own way. Not just copy. Somebody in US, he has reacted. He has produced some new uh, technology to react A plus B giving C. And I am just repeating the experiment by A plus B prime giving rise to C prime. That's not a great or path breaking research. Okay. That's just incremental research. So think out of box and design your scientific problem in your own way. Translate science into society and vice versa. So you should replicate the thing into society, scientific concept into society, and you get or you, you convert this societal knowledge into your science. Give your best and never be happy with your best. So always try to improve your best. Okay, That should be the thing. The other and very important thing is stop giving excuses. We always love to give excuses for our own fault. So unless you stop giving excuses, you cannot go to any level. Quality is required for this quality research is hunger for learning, inquisitiveness, honesty and morality, tenacity, dedication, perseverance, self-aggression, so on and so forth. And let me give one example. John Goodenough, he won the Nobel Prize only a couple of years back, precisely in 2019. Do you know his age? At the age of 97. By the way, he is the this professor John Goodenough of University of Texas at, the, at that moment. He is the oldest one to 
received Nobel Prize. Okay, in history. Then another important thing: major part of quality research comes from your brain. So as I often colloquially say, 90 to 95 percent research is done here in your brain, and very very costly instruments are required only to make your thoughts visible. They don't give something new out of them, out of the very 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 costly instruments. They don't give anything. With their help, with the help of the instruments, you may make your thoughts, your ideas visible. That's all. So the main thing that you should concentrate on or look on is your brain. Okay. Let me give some simple ex research examples from our lab. Is it maximization of sensing, a learning from the society? As I told a couple of minutes back. We must learn from the society, and we must give scientific knowledge to the society. So, what is sensing? You know, most of you know, detection and or estimation of pollutants or analytes in uh, in solution or in maybe any material or even bloodstream like arsenic and cyanide in water and potassium and sodium and copper and in your blood sample, etc., etc. Okay. So to sense, what are the methods of sensing that do exist in the science? Liquid chromatography, potentiometry, capillary electrophoresis, etc., 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 et so on and so forth. But thorough sensing is a new one, a rather newer one, and this is very, very, very sensitive, called super sensitive. So presence of a very little amount of substance can be detected very precisely and confidently reproducibly by using fluorescence. Now, there are two ways. One is, say for example, the, the sensor is having some emission. And when you add this analyte, the fluorescence intensity goes up. This is enhancement, fluorescence enhancement based sensing, or it may go down. So this was the original intensity or fluorescence intensity of the sensor and upon an uh, addition of the analyte this fluorescence goes up. okay this is quenching based sensor now what are the idea uh, criteria that the sensor must have two mostly two one is selectivity the other one is sensitivity selectivity we have no control this is just based on luck we have to try and error. That's it. But sensitivity, maybe we can change. We can uh, module it. Say, for example, a molecule is sensitive, but not to a good extent to some A. I may replace one H by CHT, and we try again, and we see that okay, the sensing is more. We can again replace another group to see that okay, now it's even more. So this is standard error method based on synthesis, but. This is not so easy, but there is another very simple thing, modification of the environment. So this was our attempt, okay? What is the thing? What is the approach? Very simple. Say, for example, in a uh, city like Kolkata, the metropolitan city, you are a newcomer. So you are looking for a, to take a, some shelter, some apartment on rent. You want to take it. And there are plenty of apartments lying vacant. But the owners of those flats, they don't know that you need one. So he wants to give the flat on rent and you want to hire it on rent, but you do not know. So the reaction doesn't take place. The process, the hand shaking is not there. So what do we do? You approach a broker and that owner of the flat, he also approaches the same broker and your hand shaking is done. So this is a societal learning that I, we learned. And we simply used it in science to get another Zach's publication, Journal of American Equivocal Society. As I already told, this is the most mostly uh, respected or highestly, uh, highest respected uh, chemi chemistry journal. 
Anyway, what did you do? This is the sensor. Forget about some molecule, okay? And medium water. Because our objective was to sense copper ion. Because our bloodstream contains some amount of copper ion. And copper ion is essential. But if the dose is or concentration of copper is a bit higher, and then we are in trouble. We have skin diseases and very it, it becomes fatal. So what, <clears throat> what is the problem in normal sensing? Concentration of copper lies in the micromolar region. And this sensor, we cannot use too much of it because that is organic molecule. So this is also problematic. Maybe carcinogenic. Most of the organic molecules are carcinogenic as a general information. So we cannot use it to a good extent. Of course, this is not soluble also in water. This is, this is organic one. Too. So at the best, we can have this sensor in the range of micromolar again. So micromolar copper and micromolar this uh, AODIQ. So they are well separated. And this fluorescence quenching, that was our method of uh, sensing. Fluorescence quenching means you excite the system, this fluoresces, and within this fluorescence lifetime, maybe one nanosecond, they have this di dye molecule is there, and so copper has to come and interact so that this fluorescence goes down. That's very difficult because they are far apart. They have to come through diffusion. So it takes a long time. So what did we do? This is like, this is the owner of the house, and you are the uh, you are looking for the house to take on rain. Now we use anionic micelle as the broker. Why why anionic micelle? Because our target is copper ion positive. So as we have already uh, shown that micelles are like spherical thing, and micelles can be anionic. That means surface is negatively charged. It may be non-ionic, it may be cationic as well. But here, specifically, we choose we chose anionic micelle because if we take anionic micelle, more of negative charges are there. So copper ions will be coming. They will be close to this periphery. And this molecule, this sensor molecule is already on the surface of the micelle. Okay. So now they are in proximity. So you excite this molecule, this AODIQ molecule, the fluorescence is there, and very close to it, copper ions are there. So quenching is very, very, very efficient. So this quenching efficiency or sensing ability, we may call, is enhanced by more than 2,000 fold. It was a massive enhancement. Okay. Now, as an extension of this powerful technique, we ask ourselves, is it possible to sense cation like copper by a cationic species? You see, if this be the molecular system, chloride is counter ion, so this is the fluorescing unit, and that is positive ion. Is it possible to use this phenosulfide molecular system, that means the cationic part, to sense a cation? The normal answer is no, that is not possible because this negative, uh, sorry, this is positive and copper ion is also positive. They will come and then electrostatic repulsion. They cannot come in contact, so there will be no interaction. But we could sense for the first time in science, this is the first time in science that a cationic species can sense or really sensed cationic item or like copper very efficiently. Simply by using a broker, of course, what did we do is we modulated or we played on this carbon chain, length of this carbon chain of the surfactants. Okay. That means we had we changed the surfactant systems or micellar system. That's it. Now coming to the other thing, I am not going into the detail to make you bored. Improve delivery of drugs to target and excretion of excess drugs from the body. You know, now for different regions, for different elements, we are used to take medicines, a lot of medicine. So they are, they are essential, but at the same time, they induce some second order 
disorder. So we take again another new type of multiple group drug and we invite another problem. So it goes on. So to the way is to get rid of drug induced side effects or at least to reduce the drug induced side effects as we thought are two. Number one, to deliver drugs efficiently to the target. And two, this is a new one, new concept, to expel adsorbed drugs from the body occasionally. This also I got, I learned from the society. What do we do when our shirts or clothes get dirty? We just uh, wash them. No? How do we wash? We give some detergent. Uh, we put it in a washing machine. Or we disturb it in a bucket. And we wash it. So basically, we are injecting some, or we are providing some surfactant-like thing, or detergent-like thing, to take it out. Exactly the same. Now, while considering this drug delivery, there are basically two approaches. One is endogenous and the other one is exogenous. Endogenous means the carrier carries the drug. And when the target region may be DNA, when the target is reached, the binding efficiency of the drug is higher with the target than with the carrier. So the carrier was carrying the drug when the DNA is there. Since the binding efficiency or binding affinity of this drug is more with the DNA, so it automatically goes there and this carrier becomes free. This is endogenous and exogenous. In exogenous case, this carrier had strong, stronger binding affinity with the drug. So even if it reaches there at the target, the drug is not released. Now we add some external stimulant. It is called stimulant. We add something else so that this structure is broken. And then uh, this uh, drug is in the aqueous medium, which is unpreferable. So immediately it goes there. So these are the two approaches. Let me give the schemes. So this is, as I said already, lipid bilayer. It's an endogenous delivery of drug from lipid to DNA. So this is the schematic picture only. So this is the uh, schematic figure of this lipid bilayer. And let us consider that these drugs are bound. So this is the carrier. And DNA, when it goes there, since the binding affinity of the drug with the DNA is higher, so the drug is transferred and this carrier is made free. Okay? Similarly, my cells can also do the same thing. We carry the drug using the carrier micelle. When it reaches the uh, DNA, since the binding affinity is more, so the drug is transferred and the carrier becomes free. These are, these are all endogenous. But for exogenous delivery, what do we do? The carrier is taken as the micelle and the stimulant is beta cyclorexin. Let us go to the scheme. So this micelle is carrying the drug. It uh, reaches or it comes in the proximity of DNA, but since the binding affinity of the drug with the micelle is more, it is not transferred. So what do we do? We put beta cyclorexin. This is uh, by the way, uh, beta cyclorexin is uh, friendly to our health. So <clears throat> we put uh, beta cyclorexin there and it breaks the, the structure. Okay. And then this drug remains in water, obviously that is not a preferable situation, so it goes there, right? So these are the drug delivery systems. Now what about drug excretion? Say for example, I am a patient of hypertension. So for years, I have been taking medicine. So what is the fate of the medicine? They work, okay, fine. I, I My pressure is in control. But the thing is, excess drugs and used up drugs, they are trapped in the cell membrane. And eventually, the concentration of the drugs become very high, and this makes system toxic, and even cancer may come out of it. So, what do we do? So, we have made uh, some experiments. As, as I already told, cell membranes are basically lipid bilayer. So, we started with lipid bilayer. It's the excretion of adsorbed drugs from lipid membranes. So, this is the lipid bilayer. That means our, this is the model of our cell membrane. So we are taking drugs and these membranes are full of drugs now. Now, occasionally, maybe after, certain, after a period of six months, I take 
maybe for three weeks, some cyclorexin dose, and cyclorexin goes there and it takes most of the drugs. So that is a very simple thing. Now, okay, this is a in vitro experiment. In the lab experiment, no problem. Is it really applicable to the real cell? So we also extended our study to real cell, living cell. What is that cell? Chinese hamster ovarian cell. And as a model drug, we took nylad, which has color. We use the confocal microscopy, etc., etc. Forget about all these things. I do not know if you can see. This is a living cell, and you see a nylad doped it. So you can see perhaps only the boundary is seen to have red dots. Nylad is red. That is why it is called, it is named nylad red. So you can see perhaps this red dots. And then we added beta cyclorexin, which is visibly there. And you see the cell is now free of drugs. Okay. So that is a very simple thing and very clean thing. Now, one may ask, one may argue, sir, what's the benefit? Because beta CD is still with the drug and it is within the uh, within our body. Now, it, it cannot stay there because beta CD, as I said, is highly soluble in water. It has so many ways to So beta CD containing the Nile red or any drug that goes out of the body by normal ejection channels of water, like urine, like sweat, etc., etc. So here I am. If you have any question, please go ahead. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, sir. Uh, this concept for catalysis is as simple as it is ingenious. I think you need to stop presenting. I think, uh, uh, yeah, stop presenting. Yes. Sir. Okay. So uh, the fact is that uh, many people have wondered why we didn't think of this earlier, the <laughs> Nobel Prize winning discovery, as you had mentioned. Now, as declared during the prize announcement, this was a truly elegant tool for making molecules right. simpler than one could ever imagine. So uh, thank you, Dr. Chattopadhyay, for sharing the nuts and bolts of this novel technique with us, as well as the attitude that we should ideally be having towards research. Now, uh, we have a question in the panel uh, from Mr. Dilip Kumar Chattopadhyay. He uh, asks you to put forward a real example where catalyst takes part in the reaction in between, but it ultimately comes out of the reaction. Yeah. Uh, eventually, Dilip is my classmate. He was my classmate when I was in the bachelor's degree in Narendra uh, Dilip, uh, for your information and as a general uh, information and answer to, to your query, uh, we have perhaps learned the first or we, we got the first example of um, catalyst as MNU, manganese dioxide, uh, in the reaction of production of oxygen. Potassium chloride plus MnO2 giving rise to potassium chloride and oxygen and MnO2 remains uh, as such. Now, there we, sh we, we were told and we now know very well that even if in the process of uh, evaluation or production of uh, what oxygen, if you give lumps of MnO2, in the end of the reaction, you will get only fine particles, finely divided particles of MnO2. So that gives a clear uh, indication that MnO2 got into the reaction because that uh, takes place in molecular shape, molecular form, and that's why they are so finely divided at the end. Okay, So this is the general thing. There are two types of catalysts, homogeneous and heterogeneous. Homogeneous For homogeneous, it's very easy to uh, establish that they really take part in uh, the reaction. And that's why uh, the concentration will, if you just change the concentration, the reaction rate will also change. But that is not true in case of uh, uh, okay, that. that is not true for heterogeneous chemicals. I think you got your answer. Right. Thank you, sir. And we have a lot of uh, laudatory applauses and comments in the uh, chat box. So I was just wondering, um, catalysts produce, say, plastics, perfume, pharma goods, anything we can think of. And you've already told us that it is estimated that 35% of the world's total GDP yeah. 
in some way involves chemical catalysis. Right. No doubt then that catalysis has helped win uh, at least seven Nobel Prizes, if I'm not wrong before this. Uh, uh, I have not counted, <laughs> but yes, many, many, yes. many, many Nobel prizes. So, yeah. uh, as a researcher, as a mentor, or perhaps just a very, very keen student of chemistry, can you tell us what makes you enthusiastic about this year's prize? As, a... uh, as I told, uh, as I mentioned in my talk, that we prior to two thousand, we had only two types of two categories of catalysts: one metal based. The other one is biocatalyst. But now it is the third one, which is this organocatalyst. And this has the this is the only catalyst that really gives you precisely S or R, or in other, other words, L or D PC. So this is very, very important so far as this medicinal science is concerned. Because we need only one form as a medicine. The other form may be detrimental for our health. So that's in that sense, this is very, very, very important and promising. Right. Thank you, sir. That brings us to the end of our session here today. Uh, thank you to the students, teachers, friends, and patrons of BITM who could make it to the session live. We've also covered this year's Nobel uh, Prize winning awards in medicine and the physics in the previous discussions. So do check them out on our channel. And uh, sincere thanks to our entire behind the scenes team for enabling such virtual meets and keeping us all connected. In a way, you are our enabling catalysts. Yeah, so right. <laughs> until we meet again, goodbye and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.